The bow of the last guardian is a tier 95 longbow that is dropped in three pieces from the Zamorak boss. Although the rates are unknown, this weapon is extremely rare, and even seeing a singular piece over hundreds of kills is unlikely. It has an extremely powerful passive ability, called Perfect Equilibrium, which gives you additional damage while also adding an additional hit to every 8th stack, which accumulate every time you hit your target with a non-bleed attack. For example, the Dark Bow special would normally hit twice for high damage, but if you were to cast the special attack while on 7 stacks, well, you've now got Triple Dark Bow. Stacks are also applied per hit, so an ability like Greater Ricochet with Chroming 4 that hits 7 separate times will immediately apply 7 stacks, meaning if I were to Gricko and then use Snipe right after, well, it's not Snipe anymore, now it's Double Snipe. This is extremely powerful as is, and is an absolutely massive DPS increase, but we haven't even got to the good part or the strong part the special attack. The Bow of the Last Guardian special attack costs 30% adrenaline, has no cooldown, and it will make perfect equilibrium fire off every fourth stack instead of the usual eight for 30 seconds. In addition to this, it deals between 175 and 375% ability damage, which is so much damage that it will generally hit cap without even being in a death swiftness most of the time. This thing is not only extremely strong in sustained damage, but its special attack is very spammable for easy, low skill, low actions per minute, sustained damage per minute that does not have a cooldown. Oh, and at this point you may be wondering what happens if you're on either 7 or 3 stacks and you cast the bow spec. Well, you get a double bow spec, so it will also proc on itself, allowing you to output even more damage. As you can see in this clip, we just dropped 100,000 damage in a matter of seconds. Now, I am not suggesting that any of you would be the kind of person to spend billions of coins on a bow to then use it at Hellwer, but if you were hypothetically that person, well, you're going to have a pretty strong performance. The double hits add up in such a ridiculous way that before you even know it, you've got a brand new personal record and it's under 20 seconds. But hey, I had some amulet swaps and, you know, I was firing abilities there. What if we didn't want to put in any kind of effort at all. Actually, what if we just did an entire Hellward kill just spamming the bow spec over and over and over again for the entire kill? Well, you would find in that instance that your kill time went up by about 10 seconds from the previous one, and you would still get in just under 30 seconds, hitting nothing but one singular keybind for the entire fight. Now, I'm not suggesting you do this because we've got a ton of strong abilities that are available to us, like Snapshot and Rapid Fire, but if you did, it would still perform very strongly, and I think it's more of a proof of how much damage this bow actually does and how strong the fact that it doesn't have a cooldown is. At the Zamrock boss, once you charge up an edict, the phase starts, and it has an amount of life points. But the boss will also start specking pretty much right away within a couple auto attacks, so if you want to skip a phase without getting a single auto attack, you need to be able to dump a lot of damage. And in my experience, at Zami, at 0% enrage in hard mode, I was actually getting kills where I didn't get any specs. I was able to skip phase 1 in this kill, phase 2, and as you can see that's the start of phase 3, and just like that with one Saren Godbow spec, it's done. We managed to cruise to a 4 minute 34 second kill, which was a 45 second PR over my initial magic times, not that I was super experienced in the boss fight at this point. We had some absolutely nuts triple dark bow specs, and then we ended up cruising to a 4 minute and 10 second kill where I forgot my stat boosting prayer for the first third of the kill. No matter how you slice it, this bow outputs an absolute ton of damage, and it's also worth noting, I am not using the maximum range switch gape here. I'm pretty much bow camping, I'm not doing a ton of arrow switching either, and for these kills I didn't even bother bringing my Eldritch crossbow, because I know it's not super user friendly and occasionally it irks you guys when I use it. To be able to get a kill time like this without any kind of real switchscape is pretty impressive, but how does it fare above 100% in rage? I'll spare you the full explanation of how phase 7 of the Zamrock boss fight works, because this just isn't the video for it, but effectively it's a DPS check, and I found a lot of success with the range combat style, more than I was expecting even. The Zamrock character model is very large, which means your Saren Godbow is going to hit a whole bunch, and with the additional damage from the bow special attack and being able to pre-bow spec before the DPS race starts, I found this extremely effective. You'll see in the clip you're watching right now, I was actually able to finish off the one cycle before the first bomb even hit me, which meant that I had about 10 to 12 seconds of additional DPS time if it had been needed. 
I did a number of pushing kills above 100% in Rage with Ranged, and I found it performed extremely well. At the Zamrock boss fight, Animate Dead and Tank Gear is gonna always reign supreme as the meta for high in Rages, but if you are camping low in Rages, I think Range is gonna perform very well, and I do know of people who have pushed well above 500% with Ranged, but in order to do that, you'll have to be a little bit better with the Range combat style than you would have to be with the Mage combat style, just simply because of the additional damage you'll be taking. All that said though, I was very pleasantly surprised with the performance here. It was very clean, very smooth sailing, and no kills were failed at any point. So if you are looking to range at the Zamrock boss, I would strongly recommend the Bow of the Last Guardian. Before the mage meta really took over in RuneScape, Raksha was considered a range boss, so I thought I would try out the bow there next. Although three phases of the fight were fairly uneventful, this phase one bears looking at because it was absolutely insane. This is the fastest solo P1 Raksha I have ever done. The only faster phase one at Raksha I have ever seen was a duo kill of mine a couple months ago that ended up being the world record. So if you are someone who's planning on camping Raksha and you enjoy the range combat style, this bow is going to be something you're going to want to have. This one's probably fairly self-explanatory, but you cannot get yourself a tier 95 bow and not attempt to solo next with it. I think next solos have been pretty straightforward for a long time, especially with all of the best gear in the game. The kills are going to be very fast and very smooth, where by the time you get to a phase, you use an ability or two, and then you're on to the next one. And personally, I don't really enjoy the boss because of that. It's just too quick and too snappy where you don't really get to settle in for any length of time, and that absolutely applies with this thing. I'm not going to recommend buying this bow for next solos if you're like struggling to get kills, because at that point it's probably more of a technique thing than anything else. But if you do happen to have this thing, you get a next sweeper or you do want to camp next, yeah, it's going to be absolutely ridiculous. I started the fight by using Blackstone arrows, and I actually didn't seem to splash a single time for the remainder of the fight, even without a Nihil, as I elected to try out a Calgarian Demon. Overall, absolutely no complaints. Next still isn't my favorite boss, but if I was going for pet or for log or anything like that, this thing would more than do the trick, and you'd have a very easy time. Okay, this does not really belong in a testing video, but it was a little more personal for me, and I saw this as a perfect opportunity to extract some sweet revenge on one of my least favorite bosses. And as you can see, that revenge was indeed very sweet. We're basically wiping each phase with a singular ability, and we managed to cruise our way to an absolutely speedy 32.4 second QBD kill, which was a personal record. And I'll say it, I had fun at QBD, which isn't a thing I've been able to say a single time in the last three or four years. The last boss I brought the Bow of the Last Guardian to is the Archglacier, and it's a perfect opportunity to talk about one additional thing that this bow does that I haven't had a chance to bring up yet. Let's stick it on 500% in Rage and get into it. Basically, arrow stacks. A recent update added extremely powerful Elder God arrows into the game, and I've been using them for the entirety of this video. They all have different effects, and I find the full arrows to be the most widely applicable and useful, but both the Wen arrows and the Bic arrows, which are what I have on right now, accumulate stacks with each successful hit. Because the Bow of the Last Guardian gives you so many extra hit splats, you'll find you can accumulate arrow stacks significantly quicker than you ever could before, meaning less time before you accumulate max stacks, which means less time before you can start hitting like a bus. You'll see even halfway through this kill that I'm at hundreds of big arrow stacks, and my poison hit splats are already between 3 and 4,000 damage. This is yet another advantage that the Bow of the Last Guardian brings, and another synergy that makes it very strong when camped. Despite this kill starting off with arms and me losing out on my initial death swiftness rotation, we cruised to a nice easy 2 minute and 33 second kill. And the cool thing about this bow and the method that we're currently using right now with big arrow stacks is the higher the enrage and the longer the kills are, the more arrow stacks we'll be able to accumulate. So this is a strategy that should hold up up to very very high enrages. Okay, with all that said, it's time for final verdict. I think this bow is extremely fractured Staff of Armadale-like. It feels like a similar level of power creep, but a very different functionality. Because it doesn't have a cooldown, I think it's a very strong, very versatile range weapon, and if you are either looking into getting into the range combat style, or you are someone who already ranges, you're going to want to have this thing. It is undoubtedly the strongest bow in the entire game, and it's not even close. The ranged combat style was in a place prior to this bow, where you could output a ton of damage, but it was a lot of work. The Eldritch Crossbow has a ton of trade-offs that I actually think makes it a very well-designed, well-balanced weapon, but because of those trade-offs, many people were choosing not to use ranged. Conversely, the Bow of the Last Guardian has virtually no trade-offs at all. It's got the long attack range, it's got the powerful spammable special attack, it's got the passive effect for having it equipped, and it's also straight up tier 95 damage and accuracy. 
It's an extremely strong weapon that follows in the footsteps of the Fractured Staff of Armadal with the release of an incredibly powerful tier 95 weapon that is very good at pretty much everything. With that said, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.